Okay, so I'm going to describe here how several common types of cell surface receptors can induce cell um, transduction pathways that affect ultimately DNA transcription. Uh, so right here in this figure we see that for A, we have receptor associated kinase. So the receptor, once bound to a hormone or signaling molecule, could directly um, phosphorylate a transcription factor in the cytosol, or it could also activate a tightly associated kinase, shown in blue here, which would then phosphorylate other enzymes or kinases that ultimately result in a transcription factor being phosphorylated. And in both cases, transcription factor would make its way into the nucleus of the cell and find the DNA segment that it's um, complementary. Uh, we also have the situation where we have cytosolic kinase. So here we have uh, basically a G protein coupled receptor when it binds to its hormone, it activates the G-alpha subunit with GTP, which then activates uh, kinase. And that, act that phosphorylates a transcription factor, which then goes into the nucleus and finds its correct DNA segment. There's also protein subunit dissociation in which binding of the hormone to the receptor causes a dissociation of a multi-protein subunit protein in the cytosol and one of these uh, subunits will become the transcription factor and then there's also protein cleavage this is where part of the protein part of the receptor on the cytosolic part will be irreversibly cleaved upon binding of the hormone and that cleaved segment will become the transcription factor. So example of this uh, first part receptor associated kinase would be uh, TGF beta receptors, cytokine receptors, RAS and MAP kinase. Examples of cytosolic kinases as this one would be G protein couple receptors, CAMP, PKA, CREB. And for the protein subunit dissociation, an example is hedgehog. And then notch delta for the protein cleavage. So, one of the ways in which these hormones um, induce action upon the transcription of DNA is uh, once they bind to the receptors the receptor will activate a kinase which ultimately leads to phosphorylation of a transcription factor and these transcription factors will cross through the uh, nuclear membrane and they'll bind to these particular segments of DNA labeled in green but notice that they only bind to DNA if there uh, there's a master transcription factor shown in blue and red that is adjacent to one of the sites that this, tran this transcription factor normally binds to in green. And so in this cell, the middle binding site does not have a master transcription factor bound adjacent and so this transcription factor will not bind to this middle binding site just to the these other two because there is an adjacent master transcription factor and also another condition is that for binding to occur for these transcription factors that have been phosphorylated the DNA segment has to be open so notice that in this area where binding occurs, the DNA is open relative to, for example, these other 
finding sites shown in green that are locked locked up in uh, this closed chromatin uh, gene off conformation. Yeah, so this is basically a summary of how different types of proteins can induce the activation of DNA transcription through a series of phosphorylated reactions that ultimately re um, lead to the phosphorylation of a transcription factor.